Hey guys, Dr. Dobson, and in this one we're going to do the manufacturing and installation of a dental implant crown that we did. Uh, this is a patient that presented with a missing lower right first molar, and the second molar had pretty bad gum disease. It was about class 2 mobility and was not a suitable uh, bridge anchor, so we decided to place a dental implant in the 4 6 site uh, right here. The wisdom tooth uh, in the lower right there does not need to be removed, so we just left it be. Uh, we did a surgery in the site, uh, non just a freehand surgery. There's the pilot PA that I'll typically take to verify angulation. And then the uh, implant place there, it, is, it was a 4.8 by, I think, 10 or 12 millimeter. And we were happy with the surgery. We had a good, uh, good initial stability, so we'll get into the uh, clinical footage here. So we waited three months after the uh, implant was, uh, the surgical phase was complete before bringing the patient back to get a, a scan. We'll take off the healing cap. And then I'll put in the, uh, the Austel beacon peg, and this will give us a implant stability quotient or ISQ number that goes to 80. We got 72 by 72 on this one, so we're more than happy to load it. And then we'll we'll get our scan. Uh, gonna scan the arch uh, as it is, and then we're gonna put in a scan flag. This is a, a DES scan flag that I'll put in, and I pretty much don't ever use um, PVS for uh, taking implant impressions, and that includes for full arches and bridges. I prefer to scan. And then we'll put in the uh, the scan flag until it's engaged, tighten it down, and then get the another scan that overlays on top of the first one with the scan post in place and then we'll take the scan post out and get a opposing arch scan and then a bite scan and then the software will, software will relate those two and then we'll send that to our designer who's going to make us a lovely uh, screw retained implant crown design here's the scan and then here's the uh, here's the designed crown uh, in the uh, ExoCAD software. So we're gonna get that back, and then we're gonna plug it into the Roland. Um, there's the uh, after it's milled. That's the Green State product before it goes into the sintering furnace. And there's the uh, there's the implant crown with some other cases after it's been sintered. We're going to polish it and then um, bond the uh, the gold uh, adapter there. The, it's a Des Aurum tie base. And they give about 20 to 25 degrees of uh, insertion freedom, which is nice. Um, wasn't too much of an issue in this case, but I use, use those things like 95% of the time. And we're basically just going to take off the healing cap and screw in the crown with uh, the driver finger tightness. And then I'll typically kind of torque it down to 15 Newton centimeters, have them bite down on a cotton roll to make sure that it's fully seated with no micro motions and then torque it down to 35. And then once it's, once it's fully torqued, I'm going to check the interproximal contacts and the occlusion. And I'll typically leave implant prosthetics like just a hair out of occlusion because there's no PDL, so it, anything in contact is going to feel like an interference. We're going to dry out the channel and then pack in some Teflon tape before we put some flowable composite on top of it, and that's pretty much good to go. I'll always retorque, especially single units. Um, after anywhere from two to six weeks of service. It's a good idea to retorque, especially uh, single units. Because if the interproximal contacts are tight and then it loosens a bit, um, the thing can come loose and then the parts get scratched and then it becomes more likely to occur in the future. So I'm going to shave off the excess uh, flowable composite and we're going to have them back in a couple few weeks. There's an x-ray of the finished product there and an intraoral photo.